From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, folks, and welcome to Ropecast. Here we are again, Roger and me, uh, sitting in a actually freezing studio because the heating has gone on the blink, and I'm sitting here in my red cross-country jacket and trying to think of a topic. <laughs> <laughs> Very good you look in your jacket, Peter. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me, actually, um, one of the, the best stores in Britain to buy outdoor clothing and mountaineering uh-huh. equipment, one of the places I used to go to a lot, uh-huh. is closing down, apparently. Uh-huh. At least uh-huh. it's, it's debatable whether it will still be here next year. All right. And um, I think they're about to have a final sale. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I saw, I heard the other day, some joker came up with a slogan that they could use for their advertising uh-huh. of a final sale of outdoor equipment. Which is? Which is... Now is the winter of our discount tents. Does that uh, ring a bell? Wait, that is a quote? Almost. Uh, now is the winter not of our discount tents. Of our, now is the winter of our discontent. So unhappiness. Yeah. Which is Shakespeare. 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 So it is a quote. quote. It is. Uh huh. They're, they're basing this idea on a quote, mm-hmm. playing with the sounds of words, mm-hmm. punning. Okay. Discontent becomes two words. Uh-huh. Discount tense. tense. Ah, okay. H- here's our topic, puns. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, there's plenty of material. Uh, if we start on puns. Well, come. <laughs> come on, hit me. <laughs> well, um, with Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, Shakespeare again. Shakespeare. There are lots of puns in Shakespeare. I mean, just... Within Shakespeare. Yeah, there are, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, Shakespeare himself liked punning. Mm-hmm. Presumably that came over well with the audience. Mm-hmm. So there was humor, even in serious situations. One from Romeo and Juliet. Mercutio says, mm-hmm. you know, he's in, he's in mortal danger. Mm-hmm. Ask for me tomorrow mm-hmm. and you shall find me a grave man. I get it. No, wait, wait, wait. A grave is is serious. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe not very optimistic, but also grave means the tomb, the That's place right. where you put dead people in exactly. the hole in the ground. Yeah, yeah. So this this kind of thing occurs in Shakespeare <coughs> very, very frequently. Mm-hmm. It doesn't okay. mean this is a, a comedy. Mm-hmm. It occurs in tragedies. It occurs, it occurs okay. across the board. But it doesn't. Puns don't always have to be very high flying. No, I think no, no. children use that a lot. I mean, I have small children, <laughs> and they're the elder one is actually starting to understand that. Uh, yeah, I think they have to get to a certain stage of yes. development: nine, ten, eleven. Uh huh. Um, that sort of age, and then they like. Oh, I think like, it starts earlier actually. Well, they like yeah. that words that sound alike that mean different things. They get that, and and I've I've heard. Things like that, and in, in the knock knock jokes, I think. Yeah, there's um. All right, let's have an example of a knock knock joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Justin. Justin who? Just in time for tea. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is <laughs> the kind of thing children like. <clears throat> right, and, yeah. and those knock knock jokes are very, very, very often, almost invariably, based on that kind of yeah uh, thing on those puns. Or the 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 true what we call homophones. Mm-hmm. Two words sound the same, even if they're written differently. Mm-hmm. Um, children love these too. Here's one for you. Another question: What's black and white and red all over? It's black and white. Black does not have red. Red. red th- it's not a. Uh, it's um. Read red. Red. Yeah. So you have red the color and red as a participle. And Come to so read. somebody reads something black and white. A book. Could oh. be. We, newspaper is the Our stand. Newspaper. Ah, stand, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's read all over. A newspaper all sells over. around the country. Ah, ah yeah. It's yeah. All read all over the place. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Newspaper makes even more sense. Yeah, and that's that's the type of, 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 of question of riddle that... Yeah. Uh, so those even quite young children can understand and enjoy using or mm-hmm. even create their own sometimes. Mm-hmm. And we can go one step further. They need to, to get more of an understanding of the grammar of the language... Okay. And then you get examples like, how do you get down off an elephant? 
don't know. Get down off, you know. You know you're, dis you're, descend, yeah. to get off an elephant, yeah. get down off an elephant. Uh -huh. Well, the answer to that is you don't get down off an elephant, you get down off a duck. <laughs> the feathers. Yeah, right. <laughs> down, yeah, yeah, the feathers. A, what you put in a, 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 down, in a jacket like a down, mine. A down jacket, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. We're back with outdoor it's, clothing. It's synthetic, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then some, you know, some that only can be appreciated by adults and have a, a bigger vocabulary, like uh -huh. alimony, uh -huh. as the Americans would say. Yes. Which is, of course, money you have to pay if you're... Your ex-wife and your children. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it could be the other way around. Uh-huh, right. right. <laughs> Alimony is the high cost of leaving. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> the high cost of leaving. Living so, is, of course... The... Yeah, these are not quite homophones, but uh, they're very, very close. I, I have one of those for you, okay. which I loved. It's from an American uh, stand-up comic. Atheism is a non-profit institution. <laughs> <laughs> They don't have profits in, yeah. in two senses. Uh, yeah. Yes, right. Different so, spelling, but again. different spelling. Yeah. Profit. So it's it's well, it's basically almost the exact same pronunciation, but uh, different spelling. Well, let's come back to to the UK for our last example for today, okay. and that is um, question and answer. This time you have to imagine here's a Scotsman. Uh huh. A tourist comes up to him, sees he's wearing a kilt. The tourist says, "Is anything worn under the kilt?" Uh huh. The Scotsman replies, no, it's all in perfect working order. <laughs> now, of course, this might be one of your rated R <laughs> puns that are not. Children, don't tell that to your parents if you are listening right now. Um, and I think we have to call it quits right now. Yeah. And we'll, how about this? We'll put a few more puns on our website. Excellent www.ropecast.de and even include some of the ones that are for adults. So, folks, have a look at our website and, of course, keep downloading us here at Ropecast. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.